Hey there, today I want to share with you my incredible experience solo hiking the famous Everest Base Camp and Three Passes Trek in Nepal. Okay, it's day one. Today, I'm taking a flight at 7 a.m. from Kathmandu to Lukla. From Lukla, I'll hike for about 8 miles or 13 kilometers until I reach the village of Manjo. The fly from Kathmandu to Lukla only takes about 25 minutes. It's a beautiful flight as you get a breathtaking view of the Himalaya mountain range. Remember to sit on the left side of the plane for the best view. People also refer to this flight as the scariest one in the world. Our plane landed safely at Lukla. There are plenty of shops and restaurants in the village. You can also easily hire a guide or porter here if needed. To enter the park, there are two permit fees. The first permit costs 2,000 Nepalese rupees, or around $15, and can be purchased as you depart Lukla. The second permit can be purchased when you arrive in Manjo. What's really unique about this trek is you're not hiking in the wilderness, but rather through villages as people have lived in these mountains for centuries. You'll get a glimpse of the daily lives of the local people known as Sherpas. The Sherpa, which means people from the east, are an ethnic group that migrated from eastern Tibet to Nepal around 500 years ago. They initially made a living from farming. It wasn't until the 1920s that Sherpas became involved in climbing when the British planned expeditions and hired them as porters. From that point on, mountaineering became part of the Sherpa culture due to their ability to climb the world's tallest peaks. The hike on day one is fairly relaxed. The trail is the only way for people to get from village to village, so it's well trafficked by both hikers and locals alike. As donkeys and yaks are used to transport everything up the mountain, you'll see many of them on the trail, and they clearly have the right of way. Tibetan Buddhism is practiced in the Himalayas, and you will experience that everywhere on the trek. Stone engraved with the famous Buddhist mantra, Om Mani Padam Hom, are placed at the entrance of villages, near monasteries, and alongside trails and rivers because these places have religious significance. But also pass by many stupas on the trek. A stupa is a mound used to house holy relics. Many times they are also surrounded by prayer wheels. Remember whether you're passing a stupa or spinning a prayer wheel, always do it in a clockwise direction. According to Buddhist belief, this is a direction that the universe spins. If you go counterclockwise, you will be running the risk of injuring the gods. I'm not superstitious, but I'll be in the mountain for two weeks, so I'm not taking any chances. On the way to Manjo, you'll pass by beautiful glacial river streams, suspension bridges, and you'll even start to see some mountain peaks. <laughs> I arrived at Manjo in the early afternoon. When searching for a tea house, make sure to ask if they have Wi-Fi and an indoor bathroom. I ended up staying at Manjo guest house and they had free Wi-Fi and charging, which was rare. For dinner, I ordered momos and dalbat, and they tasted so good after a long day of hiking. All right, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey there, it's day two. Last night, I slept for almost 12 hours. Today, my plan is to hike from Mangzhou to Namche Bazaar. The hike is only 2.6 miles or 4 kilometers, but there is a significant elevation gain of 600 meters. I didn't walk for too long before reaching the entrance gate of Sagamarta National Park. Here, you have to pay an entrance fee of 3,000 rupees or around $20. 
The hike is pretty easy as you continue to walk through the villages. Most family here keep farm animals, which you won't see as the elevation gets higher. Soon, I arrived at the famous double suspension bridge. From here, it's an uphill climb towards Namche Bazaar. I still can't believe how strong the porters are as they carry so much weight. I learned that porters get paid by the weight they carry. Thus, the heavier their load, the more money they can make. As every brick and every wooden beam must be carried up the mountain, it gave me a whole new appreciation for how much hard work goes into making this hike possible. Today, I didn't see many hikers on the trek, but there were many yaks, and they definitely did not want to go on. This guy is chasing a runaway. His attempt to freedom has failed. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the view just gets better and better as I get closer to Namche Bazaar. Namche Bazaar is known as the unofficial capital and the trading center of the Himalayas. Historically, Tibetan, Nepalese, and Indian traders used to travel for days and gather here to buy and sell goods. They still have a Saturday market till this day. <laughs> there are also several helipads here. You can actually fly from here directly to Everest Base Camp. The first tea house that I found quoted a price of $200 a night, which is insanely high. For reference, this tea house that I stayed at was only $8. It just goes to show that you can find all kinds of luxuries in the mountains. For lunch, I had dalbat. A quick tip, when you order dalbat, you can ask for unlimited refills, so definitely come hungry. Namaste. <laughs> after lunch, I took a quick nap in my room. It was still early after I woke up, so I headed to the Everest View Hotel, hoping to get my first glimpse of Mount Everest. The day was warm, and the views along the way were so beautiful. By the way, I learned that yak only refers to males, while the females are called nak. The weather soon started to change, but I was still hopeful that I would get lucky. Alright, better luck tomorrow. On my way back, the weather didn't get better. Despite this, I saw a group of people setting up prayer flags on the mountain. I also stopped by the Sherpa Culture Museum, which had a traditional Sherpa house with Sherpa artifacts. There was also a Hall of Fame gallery of Sherpas who summited Everest. It was so inspiring reading through the amazing expeditions and achievements of the Sherpas. Finally, I made my way back into town, buying some last minute gear and indulging in some chocolate chip cookies. Typically, people would spend a couple of days in Namche to acclimatize to the altitude. Since I've had some experience hiking in high altitude and I felt great, I decided not to rest in Namche and head straight to Timboche the next day. Alright, I better rest up. Good night. Good 
Good morning, it's day three. I woke up to a clear view outside of my window, so I knew it was going to be another beautiful day for hiking. My plan for the day is to hike from Namche Bazaar to Temboche. The trek is around 6 miles or 10 kilometers. The day started out relatively flat and easy going as I hiked along the beautiful mountain ridgeline. After a short while, the trail opens up to a stunning view of the Himalayan mountains, including Everest, Lhotse, and Amadablam, some of the tallest mountains in the world. This is probably the most beautiful day on the trek so far. Every corner of the trail was an incredible viewpoint. I came across a lodge with a beautiful view of Ama de Blanc, where you can use a telescope to watch mountaineers summiting the famous mountain. While there, I also tried yak cheese for the first time, and it was nutty, delicate, and delicious. On the trail, you can also see many wild birds and chickens, and they didn't seem to be afraid of people at all. There were many lodges on the way where I could stop for some milk tea, rest, or have lunch. Portions on the Everest Trail may look large at first, but your appetite definitely increases with more days on the trek. I reached Timboche around early afternoon. Timboche Monastery is the largest one in the Kombu region. Interestingly, the first Sherpa to ever summit Everest, Tenzin Norge, used to be a monk at Timboche. When I visited the monastery, there was a ceremony going on. It was truly a treat to be able to observe the daily lives of the monks living there. Visitors can also go inside of the monastery. I definitely recommend spending some time here as you can walk around the monastery grounds and it's very peaceful. Alright, that's all for day 3. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste, it's day 4. Today was the first morning that I woke up with a small headache. I'm not sure if it was due to the cold temperature or the altitude. My plan today is to hike from Tengboche to Dingboche with an elevation gain of around 540 meters. I knew that hiking at around 4,000 meters would be more difficult for me, so I started my hike early since I would be going much slower. The hike started off easy. The weather was beautiful and there's an incredible view of the mountains around every corner. I stopped at the Shomir rest stop for lunch. They had an amazing lunch set for only 500 rupees, which was a steal. 
Shomer is the first village that's above 4,000 meters. My body was definitely feeling the altitude and my headache had gotten worse. I took some medicine and rested for a while here. However, it was far too cold to sit anywhere for too long, so I started making my way slowly towards Dingboche. The landscape starts to change quite a bit after Shomer, the trees and forests disappeared, and I was greeted with broad valleys and winding streams far below the trail. Around every corner, I was rewarded with more spectacular views of the mountains with the beautiful Amada Blom in clear view. At this point, there are only yaks on the trail as donkeys can't survive at such high elevations. The beautiful view made this difficult hike well worth it. Finally, I saw the colorful roofs and stone fences of Dingbo Che from afar. Even though it was still early when I found the tea house, all I wanted to do was rest and sleep. Unfortunately, my altitude sickness got worse. I became very sick and couldn't keep any food down, which is something I've never experienced before. The mountain definitely humbles you. And at this point, I knew the only thing I could do was to rest and let my body adjust. What made this day even more difficult is that, at 4,400 meters, the air is much thinner. It's very difficult to breathe, and nighttime is extremely cold. Well, I hope I will survive the night. Last night, I struggled with a painful headache all night, and it was very difficult to fall asleep. This morning I made the difficult decision to skip Kumala Pass and instead acclimatize in Dingboche. Given my altitude sickness, I didn't think it would be the best idea to head to Kumala Pass since it's a less traffic trail. I went back to bed and slept in until lunchtime. After lunch, I felt well enough to go on a day hike nearby. My plan for the day was to hike to Nankarshan Peak. The hike takes around 4 hours with an elevation gain of almost 700 meters. This is a popular acclimatization hike as it helps your body adjust to higher elevations without having to stay there for an extended time. This is also the first time I'll hit 5,000 meters on this trek. The trail can be steep and rocky in places, but the scenery makes up for the challenging terrain. Given the uphill climb with an elevation gain of 700 meters, this hike was probably the most difficult on the trek so far. The key is to go very slowly and control your heart rate and breathing. As you reach the top of Nankarshang Peak, you will be rewarded with breathtaking panoramic views of the surrounding mountains, especially a great view of Amadablam. And if you are lucky like me, you'll even see some traditional dancing. After the hike, I stopped by a cozy bakery that makes a great apple pie. And they even offer free charging which was super helpful since my phone died right after taking this picture. Hello from Dimboche. I slept in this morning and the sun was already out when I started hiking. My plan today is to hike from Dimboche to Loboche. The hike is around 8 kilometers with a pretty significant elevation gain of 500 meters. It was incredibly scenic as soon as I started walking. The majestic peaks of Taboche and Cholatze towers over the clear sky. The broad valley beneath the mountains are filled with herds of yaks eating, bathing, and playing. These two are fighting. Fight, fight, fight. Ah! 
would run away, give up. Yes, he's just looking at him. He's like, why? What happened? Just walk away. Just walk away. Look at these yaks, they don't mind at all. <laughs> you can even peek inside the stone houses left behind from the farming days to get a glimpse of the past. Everywhere you look, there is a postcard-perfect shot of the Himalayas. You will also hear many helicopters flying by. Hopefully they're part of a tour and not a rescue mission. Soon, you will see the small village of Thakla from afar. This is where I stop for lunch. After lunch, it's a street climb to Loboche. With the rising altitude, everyone's feet are getting heavier and walking slower. The uphill climb eventually took me to the beautiful Thakla Pass. Here, you will also find hundreds of memorials. You can read the stories and pay homage to all those who lost their lives in an attempt to summit Everest. Although there is no documentation of how many casualties there are, it is believed that more than 300 people have lost their lives in the mountains. After Thakla Pass, it's an hour of relatively flat and rocky terrain before I reach the small village of Lobuche. It's very cold here at night, but the sunset is so beautiful. Alright, see you tomorrow. Good morning! I can't believe it's already day 7. Today, my plan is to hike from Loboche to Gorakshep. The hike is only around 4.5 kilometers. The trail starts by weaving over rocky highland terrain. Despite the hike being relatively easy with a gentle incline, the elevation made me gasp for air at every step. The trail seemed busier today with many people going and leaving both ways. Given the narrow trail, you'll often have to stop and make ways for the passing yaks. After a while, you will be walking right alongside the Kombu Glacier for the rest of the hike. The views are truly breathtaking, with the glacier stretching out on your right side and the towering peaks of Pumori rising in the distance. Soon, Gorakshep finally comes into view with Kalapatar and Pumori sitting behind the village. I reached a tea house just before noon, and the sun made the whole place feel super warm and cozy. I had lunch and marveled at the signs and flags left behind by past hikers. I thought about all the people who have been here, leaving their marks as they check Everest Space Camp off their bucket list, and I felt very grateful to be here. Many people head to Everest Base Camp after lunch. However, I will have to wait for another day because today I'm heading to Kalapatar. 
At over 5,500 meters, Kalapatar is the highest point in the Everest Base Camp Trek and gives you the best view of Mount Everest. You can see Mount Everest and Lhotse as you start the hike and the view just gets better the higher you go. Although some people hike to the peak during sunrise, it's a much better view at sunset. hike is around 4 kilometers. It's not a particular long or technical hike, but it's very difficult given the 500 meter elevation gain in such a short distance. I went very slowly and took many breaks to look at the amazing views. Finally, I got to the top of Kalapatar with the beautiful Mount Everest in full view in front of me. Even though it's freezing on top of Kalapatar, everyone eagerly awaits for the sunset. At 8,848 meters, Mount Everest is the tallest peak in the world. You'll often hear the local people calling Mount Everest by its Tibetan name, Chomolama, meaning Mother of the World. As the sun slowly sets, the mountain range starts to glow from yellow to deep orange. As I hike down Kalapatar, daylight slowly fades and everything feels so calm and peaceful. Okay, today's the day, Everest Base Camp. My plan today is to hike to Everest Base Camp in the morning, then make my way to Jongla in the afternoon. I started the hike by walking along the edge of the Kumbu Glacier. Along the way, you will pass by beautiful ice fields, glacial water, and dangerous crevices. Soon, the tiny Everest Base Camp Rock comes into view. During the climbing season, you'll see it immediately by the colorful tent set up by the climbers who are preparing to summit Everest. But other times, you'll have to look a little harder. You will know you have arrived when you find a small crowd gathered around the famous Everest Base Camp Rock, as everyone lines up to get their iconic pictures taken here. Base camp is actually huge, and it won't be too difficult to find a spot away from the crowds and just admire the mountains surrounding you. You can also get a close-up view of the Kumbu Glacier.
From Everest Base Camp to Jongle is around 13 kilometers, so I really needed to pick up my pace, as I stayed too long at the Everest Base Camp and had a long lunch break. But by the time I hiked to Lobuche, the day was already getting dark. I continued hiking my way to Jongle, and the view was breathtaking. With the beautiful Lake Chola and Cholatsi Mountain in front of me and the stunning Ama de Blanc behind. As the sun set, it got very dark and I only saw a few other hikers by their headlights. At last, I made it to the Green Valley Lodge in Jongle. I highly recommend this place as the owner is super kind. When I got to my room, I noticed my backpack was completely frozen. That's how cold it was. It was definitely an adventurous day. Alright, good night. Namaste! Today I have a pretty long hike of 14 kilometers. My plan is to hike from Jongla to Gokyo via the famous Chola Pass. Since there's nowhere to stop for lunch, I ordered a takeaway sandwich from the tea house. I began my hike at around 7 a.m. as the sun started to light up the surrounding mountains. The hike started off mild. Soon, the Chola Glacier came into view, which looks like a ski slope from far away. I stopped at the head of the glacier to put on my crampons. Walking on the glacier made this part of the hike super fun. After walking over the glacier, it's a steeper climb until you reach Chola Pass. I stopped here to enjoy my lunch, and the Himalayan quails seem to have gathered here for lunch as well. Woo, yummy! The other two are coming. I'm like, okay, it's safe. It's safe to eat. After the pass, the trail had a pretty steep descent down into Gokyo Valley. The valley is huge, and I was often walking by myself with no one in sight. A big change from the Everest Base Camp trek. 
finally, I reach the village of Thonak. From here, Gokyo is only two hours away. Soon after I left the village, I arrive at the edge of the Nagozumpa Glacier, which looks like another planet. Even though there are blue markings indicating the trail, I still got lost a couple of times as everything looks the same. The path winds up and around until I reach the other side of the glacier, which was an almost vertical wall that would require using all four limbs to get up. Not sure how I made it up, but by that time, the sun had already gone down. I didn't mean to do another night hike, but here we are. And I was so happy when I saw the lights twinkling from Gokyo in the distance. I woke up this morning and saw the view outside of the tea house for the first time. Wow, what an amazing place. My only plan for today was to hike to Gokyo Ri in the afternoon. After breakfast, I took a stroll around the lake. At 5,000 meters, the Gokyo lakes are the world's highest freshwater lake system comprising six main lakes. The lake next to Gokyo village is a third lake and also the largest. It's actually pretty easy to walk around the lake and here you can enjoy the world's highest beach all to yourself. I met another hiker who was heading to the 4th and 5th lake. The 4th lake is only an hour away from the village, so I headed that way since I had some time to kill. The hike to the 4th lake was pretty easy with a beautiful view of Chouyu the whole way. Soon, the milky blue 4th lake came into view. I didn't stay for too long before heading back to the tea house for some lunch. Then I started my hike to Gokyo Ri at around 2 p.m. As I climbed, the peaks began to emerge, including views of Everest starting at about halfway up. The views on the way is amazing. This might just be the most beautiful place on the trek. I would say this hike is just as difficult as Kalapatar, and these uphill summits don't get any easier. Finally, I reached the top of Gokyo Ri. From there, I got a bird's eye view of all three of the Gokyo lakes and the moon-like Nagozumpa glacier that I crossed the day before. As the light began to dim, I was blessed with another beautiful sunset view of all of the grades in the Himalayas.
And this means another night hike down. I guess it's a tradition now. Good morning. It's day 11. The mornings in the Himalayas are very cold, so the most popular place to stay warm is usually by the stove. Since there are no trees in such high elevations, yak poop is used as firewood. Today, my plan is to hike from Gokyo to Lunde via Rinjola Pass. The hike begins with a beautiful walk along the side of Gokyori. Then the trail turned into an uphill zigzag. I struggled a lot on this part of the hike and it seemed to go on forever. The view certainly made the difficult hike worth it as I look behind and see Gokyo getting smaller and smaller. Finally, I saw the first view of the prayer flags over the pass. On top of the pass was an amazing view of the Himalayan greats. Everest and Lhotse perched above Gokyo with a turquoise lake at its foot. I shared my lunch with a mountain dog and he fell asleep shortly after. After a long descent, I settled in on the first tea house that I saw in Lunde. The owner was carrying her baby inside a basket carried on her head. The dad is also a Sherpa during the climbing season and have summited Everest multiple times. Good morning! Today my plan is to hike from Lunde to Namche Bazaar before meeting the trail where I started my journey almost two weeks ago. The start of the hike was challenging as I had to cross a few streams that were still frozen. Then, it was a very pleasant walk down the valleys. The scenery was a nice change from the barren terrain of the higher elevations. The trail is busy with local people, but I rarely saw other hikers or heard helicopters. In the olden days, Tibetan traders used to cross from Nampala Pass and walk over the same route to reach Namche Bazaar to trade goods. Many of the villages along the way still retain their traditional architecture and way of life. There are tiny homesteads and yaks grazing along the river banks. You go first. You go first. You. You go. Okay, fine. The local people built beautiful stupas, prayer flags, and many stones to watch over the villages.
A stop by Thamo Monastery, which is actually run by nuns. The nuns were very welcoming and showed me the inside of the monastery. It was adorned with beautiful murals and Buddhist deities. The nun also blessed me with some holy water while I was inside. I then had lunch at the mountain resort right next to the monastery. It was a wonderful tea house run by two super sweet couples who cooked a delicious meal with vegetables from their garden. I highly recommend staying or eating here and visiting the monastery. Soon, I saw the colorful roofs of Namche Bazaar, although the streets were much quieter compared to two weeks ago, it was still filled with hikers whose eyes were lit up with excitement. I walked around the streets of Namche until dark, shopping for souvenirs and enjoying my last night here. Good morning! I can't believe it's my last day on this trek. Today, my plan is to hike from Namche Bazaar to Lukla, where I will catch a flight back to Kathmandu. Although I'm looking forward to a hot shower and finally a change of clothes, I also feel a little sad to be leaving the beautiful landscapes and amazing experiences of the past few weeks behind. As I headed out of Namche early in the morning, everything felt familiar yet different. The trail was much easier compared to the previous days, but I still found myself stopping every few minutes to take in the stunning views. The Three Passes trek has been one of the longest and most challenging hikes I've ever done, but also incredibly rewarding. The joy of this amazing trek is not just getting to the base camp, but all the wonderful days before. The amazing stunning Himalayan landscape, the challenging terrain, and the Sherpa culture all comes together to make this an unforgettable hike. Thank you so much for coming with me on this adventure. I'm now heading to Kathmandu, where I'm looking forward to exploring more of this beautiful country. See you there.